Hello, and thank you for joining us for the Mitel Connect desktop client training. The Mitel client is like a remote control for your desk phone. All of the functionality of your handset and more are now available at your fingertips. Today, we'll explore all of the features and integrations available on the client. If you have additional questions, please contact your system administrator or reach out to Corporate Data and Voice Solutions at 603 890-3421 or info at corpdvs.com. Now let's get started. To access the Mitel Connect client, you should have a link located on your desktop. If you don't have that link available, please contact your system administrator. They can also provide the login information for you to log in for the first time. In the top left-hand corner of the client, you'll notice the word connect. By clicking on the down arrow next to it, you'll open some settings. You can learn about the Mitel Connect client. If there are updates available, you can look for updates. You can review your settings, which we'll touch on later. The ability to show toolbar, edit toolbar, keep the application always on top, view additional user guides and trainings, and send client logs if you're working on troubleshooting. You can also exit the client. Underneath the connect menu, you have a dial pad and the ability to search by neighbor number through your directory. If you have Outlook integration, you will have the ability to search your contacts here. By typing in letters, it'll start sorting through your contacts to find the best suited person. Next to each contact, whether they are in your organization or not, you will have the ability to mark them as a favorite by clicking on the star icon. Kelly is listed as my favorite, but Kelly Mallory is not. You will also see the user's state if they are within your organization. I can see that Kelly is available. The green circle outside of her initials indicates that she's also available for messaging. To place a call to this user, I simply double click. It's important to note that you have the ability to type in letters and numbers. So if you have a number that includes letters, you can type that in the search field. And when you hit enter, it will turn the letters into numbers as necessary. Underneath the dial pad, you'll notice the user's initials, first name, extension, call handling state, and the call handling mode of the phone. By clicking on the user's first name or extension, you'll be able to see their full name, the direct dial number, the extension, and have the ability to change your settings. You can also view and alter your call handling mode from desk phone, the ability to utilize a soft phone, or assign your phone to an external assignment number. Typically, this is a 10-digit phone number, like a cell phone. If you notice when I changed my state from desk phone to soft phone, the icon next to my first name changed to recognize the soft phone display. Underneath that, you will also have your conference bridge information. Underneath the username and extension, you'll notice a little green circle and the word available. By clicking on the down arrow, that indicates the call handling state of the user. I'm currently set to available, but have the ability to change it to in a meeting, out of office, on vacation, do not disturb, or set a custom greeting. By changing my state, I also change the icon next to my initials. This state is visible to other users in my organization. Underneath the user details on the client, you can view your contacts. 
you can view all your favorites, which were selected by the blue star that I indicated earlier next to Kelly's name. You can view all the users that are within your organization by their presence. As you can see, the green circle is around Kelly Kucher, Nick, Manny, Joe, and Rachel, which signifies they're available for IM. If you look at Joe Spampanato's circle, he's showing his orange, which means he's currently on a call. I can search by name or extension as well, depending on how big your list is. By right-clicking on the user's name, I can add the contact to a different group, send a voicemail, send an IM, schedule a conference call, call them by dial, or alert when available. This may be helpful if you're looking to speak with someone, but they're busy at the moment. You can also view your groups and their activity. By clicking on the settings next to each group, you can send a group chat, schedule a meeting, or send a voicemail. Under your favorites in your groups, you can add new contacts, sort by last name, first name, availability, last to be contacted, or a special order, and you can change your view depending on what you're looking to see. If you're looking to see who's called you or calls you've made, you can click on Recent. Under All, you can see the last 1,000 calls to, from, and missed. You have the ability to sort by extension or by username if you're interested in seeing who's called. If you need to export your call history for any reason, you can do so in the far right-hand corner. By clicking on the Export Call Data icon, you can export your data from today, last week, or last month. To export into a CSV, click Export. To view your missed calls only, you can do so by on, clicking on the Miss tab. You also have the ability to sort here, and I can see how many calls have been made by that name or number. To call back that user, you can click on the phone number. To access your voicemails via the client, click on the Voicemails tab. You can view all your voicemails, heard and unheard, on the main page. If you have any unheard voicemails, it will be bolded and have an orange circle next to it. To view all unheard voicemails, click on Unheard. Or to view saved voicemails, click on Saved. By clicking on a voicemail, you access your controls. You can play the voicemail via your speaker or your desk phone. You can call the user who left a voicemail, forward the voicemail to another party. By typing in a name, it'll bring in through your contacts. And you have the ability to record a prefacing message, mark it as urgent, mark it as private, and mark a send receipt. When marking the voicemail as private, the user cannot forward the voicemail after it is received. To send the voicemail, you can hit send. If your organization plans to utilize messaging, then you'll have a messages tab underneath voicemails. Under Messages, you can find all of your past communications. To start a new conversation, you can go into Contacts and right-click on the user and send IM, like mentioned earlier. Or you can send a message by looking through your contacts, right-clicking, and sending an IM that way. If your organization plans to use email integration, you'll notice that you have an event 
tab. You can view upcoming events, past events, the ability to create new events, view a calendar, and filter by all our recorded videos. If you have an upcoming meeting that utilizes a Mitel conference bridge, you'll have the ability to call me at my desk phone, which will make your phone automatically ring and place you into the meeting, or you can join a screen share. Now that's a quick overview of the client. Let's jump into call control. To make an outbound call, you can either use the dial pad to enter numbers, or you can begin typing letters or numbers here. As I had mentioned in previous sections, this will search through your Outlook contacts, and you can double click on a user to place the call. When the call is placed, you have the ability to hang up or put the user on pause. If you need to transfer the inbound call, click on the transfer button and you can enter a phone number or an extension. Once the user is selected, you can either transfer Consult, Intercom, if it's integrated. You can park the call on the other person's phone. You can whisper, or you can send them directly to voicemail. When you're receiving an inbound call, you'll notice that you have a green button that shows up on the icon and you have the ability to have a pop-up in the bottom right hand corner. You can accept or deny, answer the call or reject it. As you can see, I'm going to answer it and I still have all of the same call control that I did making an outbound call. I can hang up, put the call on hold, mute the call, if we're in a screen share, I can screen share. I can add participants, which is similar to a conference call, and transfer. By hitting transfer, I have additional features here, which weren't mentioned up on top. So if you find the user that you're looking to send it to, it'll search through your contacts or you can enter a 10 digit phone number. And then you have the ability to transfer consult, intercom, park the call on the other user's phone, whisper, or send them to voicemail. Once you hit on the option you want to choose, the call will immediately transfer.